Today's passage from Holy Scripture is Exodus chapter 32, verses 1 to 14. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, Up, make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So Aaron said to them, Take off the rings of gold that are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the rings of gold that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made a golden calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down, for your people, whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way that I commanded them. They have made for themselves a golden calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, in order that I may make a great nation of you. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, with great power and with a mighty hand. Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent did he bring them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your burning anger and relent from this disaster against your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by your own self and said to them, I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your offspring, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord relented from the disaster that he spoken of bringing on his people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Can please stand for the gospel reading? This morning the gospel is taken from the gently Second uh, chapter, according to the Gospel of St. Matthew, beginning from verse 1. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Matthew chapter 22, verse 1 to 14. And again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son and sent his servant to call those who were invited to the wedding feast but they would not come. Again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves has been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went off, one, of his, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servant treated them shamefully and killed them. The king was angry and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads and gather all whom they found, both bad and good. 
So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, Friends, how do you, you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was spe speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hands and foot and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and snatching of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Please sit. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have made us a people of your own possession to our Lord Jesus Christ. You have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light with a purpose of declaring your excellencies, your goodness and your greatness. And this morning, as we come to the hearing of your words, may our hearts incline to receive and to obey, to be a people called by your name and to make you known wherever we are. So may you lead us and guide us in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, this morning we're going to talk about uh, stewardship. Uh, last week, uh, Reverend Tang gave us an overview of stewardship. Today is about stewardship of our faith. When we talk about stewardship, it's about ownership. Okay. What God has given to us, what God has entrusted to us. So the title that has been given by Reverend Tang, he has already prepared for, for the whole year, this year, whole preaching series. You know, he, that, that he entitled it, uh, Building Faithfulness on the Way to the Promised Land. You know, building Faithfulness. So our journey, when we, when we say we receive Jesus Christ, we begin a journey of faithfulness with Him. You know, the moment we receive Jesus Christ, we receive an identity, an identity to fulfill a purpose to arrive to a destination. So when we read the, 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 the two passages uh, earlier on uh, in Exodus and in Matthew, we're going to see that, that there's a journey, all right? And, and in Exodus, how the people of God has turned away and as what the choir have sung just now earlier on, uh, we are like sheep who have gone astray, turned away. So it's very important when Jesus said, my sheep hears my voice. And sometimes we have some strange ideas. When we say hear his voice, you know, when I speak to a lot of people, uh, they, they want to go to a certain place and they want to literally hear the voice of God. <laughs> literally. But... If we, have, if we have read, as I said, now usually those people who, who have said they want to hear the voice of God, I say, uh, have you read through uh, Genesis to Revelation? I guess they haven't. Because if you have read Deuteronomy, it is God who says, hear my voice, obey my commandments. So we can hear the voice of God every day when we open up scripture. He will speak to us. And the words of Jesus are there and, and even the, 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 the Bible translators go and make effort to, 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 to print the words of Jesus in red so that it will stand out when we read it. So, yeah, because, because the words of Jesus is life-giving. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And Jesus is God. So, there's a definition for faithfulness. There's a definition. And it must be tangible. It must be expressed. 
And when people said, are we sure of our salvation? We can be sure because Jesus has shown us that we can be sure of our salvation. Because Jesus, in his teaching, he has shown us what it means to be a faithful servant and what it means to be a lazy and wicked servant. He has given us that comparison. He has shown us on judgment day that on the right will be the sheep and on his left will be the goat. So we know the expectation of God. We cannot say we are ignorant, we are not sure. We can be sure of our salvation as long as we obey God's word. So, so what is faith? Sometimes people may talk, no, must have faith. No, faith is maybe some kind of feeling. <laughs> no, it's not a feeling. Faith is active. There must be expressions of our faith to show who we are. Our identity to fulfill a purpose that will lead us to a destination. So when God called His people out of Egypt, the main word He used to Pharaoh is, let my people go that they may worship me. So indeed, the whole journey is about being set free to walk in all faithfulness, leading God to take our hand. But before we ask God to take our hand, we must stretch out our hands. Okay? God will never force us to take our hands if we don't stretch out our hand. So when we stretch out our hand, He will take our hand and He will lead us. Just like a child asking the father to lead the way, the child has to lift up the hand, right? And the father will take the hand and walk together. So what is faith? Faith is believing what God has said and we do regardless of the circumstances. That is faith. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, faith is pleasing God. And here, Paul no, sometimes we only know verse 7, right? Walk by faith, not by sight. You know? But we have to look at this context. And when we look at this context of, of chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians, you know, that, 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 that famous, there are a few famous verses, uh, standout verses, you know, uh, that God has made us an ambassador. God has called us, uh, give us a ministry of reconciliation. So when we look at the whole context, it's about preaching the gospel. That we are, we are given a message of reconciliation. We are called into the ministry of reconciliation. We are called to be the ambassador of Christ to the world. And that is our goal. That is the ministry that God has given to us and we have to own it. We have to be good steward to it. To tell the world, be reconciled to God. You have lost an identity and right now God has, will give you an identity in Christ. And with this identity, you will find your purpose and when you do the will of God, when we come, arrive at destination, when we see Jesus face to face, what will He say to us? And Jesus gave us two statements only. Well done, good and faithful servant, or you lazy and wicked servant. So Paul here said that we have to be of good courage. Whether we are here on earth or with the Lord, where, where this Paul, he said sometimes he was torn, uh, whether to be on earth or be taken, but both are fine. Because he said, if the Lord doesn't take me, as long until my last breath, I will fulfill the purpose of God in the preaching of the gospel. And in verse 9, it says, So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. So what is our aim in life? Do we have a vision that's given by God? Do we have a destination that is given by God that we aim it, that we are not being distracted by the things of this world and become sheep that has gone astray. We have to be, be careful 
because it's a discipline to always to focus on Jesus. Especially we are living in a world that has so many attractions that can be a distraction to all of us. So this aim of pleasing God will lead us in verse 10, where Paul said we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, it means in our lives, whether good or evil. Another text I'd like to share is Hebrews 11. You know, just now the choir sang the song, uh, Harmony, uh, sang the song. You know, I, I, I hope when we sing about that song, those who were before us, those who are behind us, you know, f- we f- that we will be found faithful can bring us into memory, of course, from Hebrews 11 to Hebrews 12, that we are surrounded by witnesses that has gone before us cheering us, encouraging us. And here in Hebrews 11, a person was mentioned, said, by faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. He was found. He was not found because God had taken him. Now, before he was taken, he was commended as having Please, God. So when we look back the account in, in Genesis chapter 5, there's a mention of, of, of Enoch, yeah? A special mention. There's always an additional uh, 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 commentary, com- uh, commentary about him. And here also in Hebrews, if you look at whole Hebrews, there's a special commentary. That, was in, that is in verse 6. Commending. Enoch, and without faith, it is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and he rewards those who seek him. So it means Enoch, how did he please God? He pleased God by seeking God. Our journey is all about seeking God. We have not arrived until God has bring, brought us to that destination. And it says about Enoch being drawn near to God. How do we draw near to God? We have to ask that question. And must believe that he exists. No, Enoch is following a God that is invisible. But he believed that he exists. And because he believed he exists and do and did what God had told him to do, that was his expression of faith. And he said there are rewards. Huh? And it is God who rewards those who seek him. Seek him earnestly. So there's also a mention on Enoch in, in the book of Jude. So in the, in the context of Jude, it's about righteousness and wickedness. And indeed, Enoch was living in a generation of wickedness. Because he, in his generation, he was proclaiming the coming judgment of God in Jude. Of course, it led to that, to that ultimate climax in Genesis chapter 6. That generation of Noah. He has turned into such wickedness that Noah and his family was the only family of all the earth that was righteous in that wicked generation. But Enoch's generation, he has already seen wickedness and he has walked with God for 300 years in the midst of wickedness. And that is faithfulness. He was not drawn to the wickedness of that world, but he was faithful. And he he himself also know that if he walked in the righteousness of God, God is going to judge the wickedness of his generation. In every generation, there's wickedness, and God will judge. You know, when when, when, when I begin to prepare uh, this this, uh, sermon, it reminds me of uh, a book which I read, Pilgrim's uh, Progress, uh, by John uh, Bunyan. Okay, and uh, yeah, this is a a, a screenshot from from the computer. Right now, I, I want to recommend... 
All right? So next time you want someone to, 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 to know what it means to be a Christian, right? Okay? Sometimes people don't like to read. Uh, they like to watch. Okay? Uh, good resource from the YouTube. This is a modern adaptation. I would recommend. Highly recommended. Okay? Highly recommended to tell someone who said, well, I want to follow Jesus and said, okay, if you want to follow Jesus, you will go through difficulties. So m- many a times when we tell people to believe in Jesus, we never tell them the difficulties. It's only when they encounter the difficulties, then they say, huh? Like that? Ah? Then they don't want to walk with Jesus anymore. So I hope that in our preaching of the gospel, we have to be forefront. Jesus also has been very forefront in what it means to follow him. Deny himself, take up the cross and follow him. Those who love father, mother, wife, children more than me is not worthy of me. He must increase, I must decrease. So that is the journey. So, um, what's the, the summary of, of the Pilgrim's Progress? And here, uh, I, I, of course, I, some of the words I added. It said, follow Christian. Okay, this person is called Christian. Okay, what it means to be a Christian. This character in Pilgrim's Progress is called Christian. And his companions on a great journey to the gates of heaven, a journey with distractions. of family rejecting the way and others falling out along the way for an easy way. Broad is the road that leads to destruction. Narrow is the road that leads to eternal life. Add to deceptions of self-made way. Self-made Christianity No, how do we know that our Christianity that we are embracing, is it self-made or of our own imagination or is written in Scripture? Because in Exodus 32, they have deviated, isn't it? Become impatient. Where is this Moses? Uh, so long. Uh, impatient. Actually, they are not impatient with Moses. No, they are impatient with God. And they, take, and they took things in their own hands. They created their own religion, a golden calf. And yet, they said, this is the Lord that led us out of Egypt. They have deviated. And that deviation is a very serious matter which warrants God's judgment. which Moses, in his, all his humility, pleaded God not to judge. It's not that God made a wrong decision, because if God made Moses, oh, Moses, to, to, to subsequent generation or his own people, it's not wrong, because Moses also came from Abraham. He can restart as long he can restart with any descendant of Abraham. So actually God did not make a wrong decision. Even Moses should have took, took up the offer, right? Wow. So if Moses had took up the offer, then it will be Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses. Moses, in his humility, pleaded God. So, uh, continue on, deceptions of self-made way, and the way is impossible, not possible. It is possible. He have his difficulties, it is possible. And Jesus said it is possible when we persevere. Regardless of the circumstances, whoever persevere to the end shall be saved. Of course, Christian, 
persevered in the way to the end. This allegory has very good truth presented and has right message for anyone who wants to understand more about the real Christian life journey. And earlier on, the, the, the harmony you know, sang that song about being pilgrims. In fact, we are pilgrims on a journey. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up way beyond the blue. No, that was a song that I learned back in the 80s when I was a youth in St. John's Chapel. You know, where every Saturday night, I would go to our brother's Akau's place. I trust brother Akau can remember those times. <laughs> those songs, you know, they, they call it youth fellowship songs. And they're always talking about a journey, you know. It's a vision and this is a crazy world that we are living in. Do not be part of that craziness. Go through that craziness. And how to go through this craziness is to find our sanity in Christ. To follow Him all the way. You know, there's a challenge uh, to, to, to go to uh, a youth meeting at Brother Sakao's place on a Saturday night. You know, Saturday night is prime time. Uh, and during those days, uh, it's very rare uh, to have live telecasts uh, when Singapore's soccer team... Uh, uh, qualify for the semi-finals and the finals of the Malaysia Cup. Because the meeting at Brothers Akau's place is at 7.30pm on a Saturday. And the soccer match also starts at 730 at the National Stadium and there's live telecast. So, what should I choose? Soccer, does it contribute to the purpose of God? Or going to the youth fellowship at Brother Sakao's place to, will contribute to the purpose of God and also the building of faith, learning new things, fellowship with fellow youths. At that time, my peers, my contemporaries. I think this is also very real, right? Even for some of our young adults, you know, we have people who have favorite English Premier League soccer team. Especially the live telecast is at 3 a.m., 3.30 a.m. on a Sunday morning. They have to come for service. What should we choose? It's okay. La. Next week, then I come. La. Then we are no different with what Jesus said in the parable of the soil. La. Cannot decide, you know. The world, God. The world, God. After 10 years, 20 years still, the world, God. The world, God. Undecisive. So we have to be decisive. Because to be decisive, then we know how to put our time, our energy to own our faith, to build that faith as we go through that promised land. Stewardship of our faith. Are we aware of the distractions and the deceptions around us. Is our Christianity self-determined or God-determined? We can tell, right? Definitely we can tell it is God-determined if we have been reading Scripture every day. Completed the whole Bible once a year. I don't recommend uh, complete the Bible in two years, uh. Because the faster we know, the better it is for us. The faster we are able to please God. Isn't it? The faster, quicker, access, accelerate the speed. I know, then I, our aim is to please God. Every day until our last breath, until we see our Lord Jesus Christ face to face. So when we look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 11, Jesus was distracted and there was also deception also by the devil. 
But Jesus humbled himself. He submitted himself. And Jesus also went through the desert, just like the Israelites. And we read from Matthew chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse 1, Jesus was led by the Spirit to the wilderness. Just like Israel, they were led by God out of Egypt to go through the desert for 40 years, but Jesus went through the desert for 40 days. What is that purpose? If God were bring, will, will to bring His people out of Egypt, Egypt is, is, is symbolic, the sin, uh, an environment of sin. The land of Canaan, promised to Abraham, is symbolic of our destination where we arrive, heaven. And, the one, and in between that journey is the desert. Not environmentally desert, uh, but we have to go through that desert. Just our Lord Jesus Christ, who went through that desert, for 40, wilderness for 40 days, he was found faithful. Isn't it? Yeah, if you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Lah, you know? Why make life so difficult for yourself? You are the son of God. What? Why do you deny yourself? Eat. Lah. But God was on a mission because Jesus knew that he was led by the Spirit. And of course, he brings that statement, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Why? It's because it refers to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy was telling that the people there were just interested in the manna and the quail and water. And where there's no manna, no quail, no water, they complain. They murmur. They make a lot of noise. And in Exodus 32, they did not wait for God. God's instruction is to wait. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. When God said, wait, wait. And we always say God's time is perfect, right? God's timing is always perfect. Then why are we impatient? Second temptation, the devil brought Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple. Jump lah. Actually, you know what it means? To be reckless. Don't worry. It's okay, no? To be reckless. Sin here, sin there. It's okay lah. God is gracious. God is merciful. And what did Jesus say? You shall not put the Lord your God to a test. And the people of Israel when they were in the wilderness, they put God to a test. And when they tested God, God judged them. And sometimes we are the victim of our own consequences. Because we put God to a test. I heard a testimony real life from a lady to cut the story short, just to say that uh, no, age is catching up. She's not getting married. She, she, she's not, uh, <laughs> she's looking forward for marriage. So, no fish, prawns also can. She's a Christian. Go and marry a non Christian. And hopefully, by marrying a non Christian, can, can convert him, end up being abused, having a son that gone into drug addiction. And when she was sharing that testimony, she was crying. Did she put God to a test? That what she think by marrying a non-Christian will get that person believing in Jesus Christ. Regretted. So do we compromise? What is God's teaching about marriage? The wife is supposed to be a helper, right? If a non-Christian girlfriend will become a wife, how can be the wife be a helper? 
to a man. And of course, I will ask the man, do you know God's purpose that you marry this woman to be your helper in God's purpose? So this is the map, the journey that Israel went through, set free for a journey to please God. And this was what God says, a journey to please God. The whole commandment that I command you today, Deuteronomy 8, you shall be careful to do that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. You shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness that He might humble you, testing you to know what is in your heart, whether you would keep His commandments It's a testing from God. Are we faithful to Him? Are we the stewards of the faith that He has given to us? And Paul also indicated in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 about a journey to please God. He says here, Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not pleased. Actually, Paul was referring to the journey in the wilderness huh? is recollecting. And they were overthrown in the wilderness, means judged by God. Now, these things took place as examples for us. A lot of Christians uh, don't read the Hebrew Bible you know, from Genesis to Malachi. They always stick to Matthew to Revelation. And here Paul says, and Paul in those days, the early church, uh, the Bible that they used uh, was the Hebrew Bible, the law of Moses and the prophets. Examples for us that we might not desire evil as they did. So the people of God, Israel during Moses' time, did evil. Though they called themselves the people of God, covenanted people of God, they did evil. And Paul is bringing it to the Christians in Corinth. We are the same, no different. All of us have a sinful heart that need to be transformed. Verse 7, do not be idolaters as some of them were. This was referring to what we have read, uh, Exodus 32. Uh. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Reckless. So sometimes when I was a youth pastor, sometimes when you said, wow, oh, no, St. John Chapel youth uh, is very fun. Of course, I said, yeah, we have some play fun, but the, the, this fun uh, is only 10%. Uh. 90%, you better be serious. Because the day when there's no more fun, they won't be coming. And Paul reminded the church in Corinth, we must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. God judged 23,000. I do not know whether have we read verse 9. We must not put Christ to the test. Is this new to us? We can put Christ to a test. And where was Christ? Christ was with the people of Israel during Moses' time. And here, this is a description of God, Christ. As some of them did and were destroyed by serpents, Jesus was there to judge. nor grumble as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. And who is the destroyer? Christ in that context. Jesus is both saviour and destroyer.
Remember today's gospel reading? Remember last week uh, where Reverend Tang preached? He will put those wretches to death. The king will put those people to death. And who are those people? Those people who claim to believe in God, but not living out the purpose and the will of God. Verse 11, Paul re-emphasized again, and now these things happen to them as an example. And they were written down for our instruction on whom the end of ages has come. All these were written so that we may be careful to walk in the way of the Lord and when the ages end, when Jesus Christ comes back, may we be found faithful in Him. Our faithfulness to God is our humility. It's a journey from self-corruption to God's commandments. Because when we obey God's commandments, it's for our transformation. Has the people of Israel been grateful to God that He delivered them out of Egypt? No, they were not grateful. In that journey, they are all grumbling at self-entitlement. How come you come here, no water? Ah? How come you come here, why? Egypt, no graves. Ah? Not enough land for, for graves. Ah. Have to bring us out to, to die in the desert. You see, they come into a conclusion that God meant evil for them, meant wickedness for them. If God has meant evil and wicked for them, why did He, at the first place, bring them, them out of Egypt? So instead, they are grateful, they are stiff-necked, which God said, you are stiff-necked people. Stubborn. Instead of patience, exercise patience every time when they come to a situation, no, say, God, what's next? But they never ask God what's next. They come to a conclusion. The conclusion is always about negative, negativity of God. Patience instead of murmur. So we have to examine ourselves. Are we stiff-necked? Do we murmur to God? Our humility for God's priorities. As long as we are humble, submissive to God, then the priority of God will be in our lives. Last week, Reverend Tang asked whether in confirmation did Pastor Fuman <laughs> teach certain things about being an active church member. So today, I will say that in confirmation, those who got confirmed uh, uh, recently, this, these are the five things which I told, told the, the confirmants. That right now in confirmation is to be an active member. Faithfulness from called to chosen. We are all called. But in the end, are we chosen? Because when we look at the Matthew message, passage, someone was standing before the king and the king was looking, how come your dressing uh, not on the right dressing? Actually, it's about transformation. This person believed but wasn't transformed. And Jesus ended, many are caught but few are chosen. All of us are caught. But are we chosen at the end? So from court to chosen, that journey is about faithfulness. Faithfulness in the word. That we must know the word so that we are very clear of that direction. That we can walk by faith and not by sight. In the midst of the desert, God is there to provide. God is there to guide. Prayers of sacrifices. What do we mean by prayer of sacrifices? Our, our prayer should be less of give me, give me, give me. It should be, Lord, use me, use me, use me. When was the last time 
in our, prayer, in our personal prayer that you say, God, use me. Because when we ask God to use me, He will provide all that is necessary for us to be used by Him. And many a times, many Christians say, God, give me, give me, give me. But after receiving it, never use it for the purpose of God. So to me, personally, I would rather say, God, use me. If God wants to use me on this, on that, He will give. He will provide. If He didn't provide, then it's okay. I cannot be used. Or God choose not to use me on this. Givings for needs, tithing, our givings, what is that purpose? It's for needs. As was mentioned last week by Raymond Tang. Serving to build up that community. And lastly, outreaching to grow. So this is about ownership and the only attitude that we can have to fulfill the priorities of God in our lives. Tangible ways, expressions of faith are found in these five things. Five things. Faith is active. It's not passive. So may we all be found faithful as the song we sung just now, that we may be found faithful by God. And also, seize every opportunity to be found faithful. When we see an opportunity that is of God, may we participate and be found faithful. Let us pray. Lord, in it, we pray that the whole community here in St. John's Chapel will be good stewards of our faith. And this faith must be defined by your word, not by our own definition, but by yours. So Lord, we pray that we'll be very clear from your word, that all of us as a community here will take note of the people of Israel when they journey with you. Lord, that we will be forever grateful that you brought out us from an environment of sin to this journey of transformation so that we can be on the right position to enter the promised land. So, Lord, we pray that we'll give ourselves to you. Have your own way with us. Each of us here individually and also a community. So, we submit ourselves to you. And may we pledge anew and afresh as we come to your table. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.